this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. What's he up to now, I hear you say? Well, quite honestly, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to wing it as I go along. So it's a mystery tour. But the one thing that all these plants have got in common is they've been on a mount a very long time and just simply that fact alone says that any moss that's on these mounts has had it. In fact, it had probably had it some time ago. And it's just so easy to get complacent and lazy and just pick these up and water them and put them back where I got them from and think, yeah, they'll be fine. Yeah, well, when you start looking closer, maybe they're not so fine, you know. And sometimes that complacency or call it laziness if you like, because in some cases that's just what it is, can get your plant to go downhill. You know, none of us want that. You know, we want to look after our plants. So I'm going to have a go at these. I've been through my records and um, these are the ones that stand out. I mean, some of the, these were mounted, you know, in the early part of 2015. And they've got spag sphagnum moss on them. Well, it don't last that long. <laughs> you know, so I can virtually guarantee the moss in some cases is uh, well gone. And if you think of the work on the Tolumnias, one of the main reasons for doing that was, was that very fact, you know, going downhill and just, tr well, I don't know, you bury your head in the sand, you try to ignore it because of the workload <laughs> by not ignoring it. Well, if you want to save your plants, sometimes you just got to do the work. That's how it is. Um, my scissors are in soaking, rubbing alcohol, in case I decide to trim any bits of plants off while I'm going it. It'll probably just be dead roots, but we shall see. Um, right, going over the plants individually. Um, this is my Brassavola nodosa. Now, this is going downhill for a very good reason. I dropped it on the floor. I broke that lovely strong new growth off and bent that one. Now, I was hoping that there'd be enough secure cell structure in the joint there for this to push on but it's not it hasn't moved so that growth is not going to grow so this is the only new growth i've got left on this plant at the moment just the one you know that should have been three that should have been three lots of blooms next year well now it's probably only going to be one so this has now been set back by two years simply by dropping it on the floor and being careless now this one was wired on and you can see there's a, a base of moss that has just had it. And where are the worst roots on here? Yep, they're the ones touching the moss. Now this is attached well. These, these roots still work. And I'm going to take a tip from somebody else. When your roots start getting a bit green, they're getting algae on them basically. And um, if it's allowed to build up to a greater extent, um, you know, it can stop hydration or it can allow the velum to hydrate and then promptly suck the moisture back out of it, trying to feed itself. So it shouldn't be there, basically. And a tip I got from somebody else is if you spray the roots with hydrogen peroxide and leave it for a bit, and then either with a very soft toothbrush or something like that, or using the pressure of your tap, if you've got good pressure in your tap, it should wash off and leave the roots a bit cleaner. So I might have a go at that as part and parcel of this. But how on earth I'm going to get that moss out, I'm not quite sure. But out it's going to come. I don't want to tear this off its mount. I would lose this set of roots around the base. If I lose them, and I, I sort of think about the fact that I might have to, then so be it. There's more than enough good roots on here. More than enough. And this new growth here has just got the signs of more new roots coming out. Little tiny green tips. I don't know whether the camera can pick that up on the end of my finger there. So if I lose a few roots on that one, it's not the end of the world. Now this is another Brassavola that's never bloomed for me. A sign of something not right. The last new growth failed. And I'll say last new growth. The only new growth failed. Now, this has got an awful lot of roots attached. It's got a lot of new ones coming out from older roots. But the base of the plant is in old moss that's been there a very long time. Now, this plant doesn't look as good as it used to. Now, this one I might take off. 
I'm going to see it's wired on again, take the wire off, start digging around, around the back of the plant and see if I can get as much of that moss off as possible and then sort of retie it on. Um, both of those may well stay just bare rooted and not get any new moss. I might not bother. That's probably how they would grow naturally. Right, I've brought one Orangus in. Now this one's going to be easy. There's very few attached roots. There are a few older ones at the back and it's got very little moss on it. So that just needs untying, the moss teased off and maybe some new moss, maybe not. I don't know, but I just want to get that old moss out. And this is this old moss is going to come out easy. Look, I can practically do it without even untying it. It's just going to pull off. So this one won't be a big deal. That one's going to be easy. That's the Orangus. Strictly speaking, the Fastuosa, Orangus Fastuosa, needs doing as well. But it's got so little moss on it that I don't think it's worth disturbing the plant. They're a fragile little Orangus. <laughs> Sounds like I'm swearing at it, doesn't it? Both of my Neophanesias need doing. Yeah? Now this has got quite a lot of old moss on it. And this is not going to get bare rooted. This is going to get redone and it will go in some new moss. Um, these roots are quite difficult to hydrate. These old burnt roots are from a previous problem that if you've been following me long enough would know all about it. But the new roots coming out this year, uh, they look okay, they're not bad, but I think that would do better in some new moss. If you look at the way a lot of people grow neos, they do grow them in pure sphagnum moss in a pot often on like a mound. You know, they, 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 they sort of spread the roots over a ball of sphagnum and then wrap some more around the outside and then like plonk it on the top of a pot. So it's not even really in the pot, it's sat on it. But it's in moss. It stays hydrated that way. So that one I could get the old moss out and just put new moss on it. Um, I don't know till I try. Now this one... I used to grow on a piece of driftwood, like that. And again, the moss broke down and it started going downhill fast. I took it off the driftwood, got all the old moss out and mounted it. And at that point, it really took off. Well, now it's slowed down again. It's not happy again. And this moss has been here since 2015. That one, I'm pretty sure, will detach quite easily. I don't think there are many attached roots. So again, I may put that in moss in a pot. I don't know. It's actually two plants. So I might do one thing with one part of it and something else with the other. And then I can see which one does best. Um, this is... What is it? Oh, still early in the day. It is a Cilogeny and it's um, Fimbriata. Has lovely sort of um, fawn and deep brown coloured blooms in the autumn. I've got two potfuls of this. If I lose this, it is the end of the world. Now, just a quick analysis. This is where the moss is, and this was just a little piece. Yeah. Well, the the, the piece that I originally mounted has has gone. There's no point in keeping that part of this plant. This is the bit that's worth keeping, and this has got little aerial roots on it. It's split into two and set off up here. Now that has attached, but it's only attached by one root and there are others. So I could take these two little pieces off. This other piece down here, the oldest part again, no point in keeping this down here, but it has shot out in several directions. So there's at least four pieces of that that are recoverable. It's a Cilogeny. I don't think it's ever going to do well bare-rooted. They need too much moisture in their growing season. They're a drinker. So I may put the pieces in a pot. And then I can sell them on because, as I said, I've already got two big potfuls that are doing really well. So this one's almost irrelevant, whatever I do with it. But I think if I start a new little potful now in June it might pick up enough to actually produce some blooms in the autumn. Even if it's only one or two, it then becomes a very sellable plant if it's actually got a bloom on it. <clears throat> Again, this one, 
I add a couple of little pieces there to there and possibly that bit and then down here this old piece here now two separate plants again at the base when I mounted it originally where is all the new growth at the top where are all the roots in the air yeah that's not ideal now that's a maxillaria it's sophronites there's those little tiny red flowers on um, my original plan for this was quite long term but I was going to let it grow and then as these pieces at the top started to push their roots out like they are now there's roots all over the place at the top here and some of them are starting to grab hold of the bark unfortunately um, I was going to take these pieces off and reintroduce them down the bottom to make it more bushy but that option's now gone because it's taken longer than I thought and this moss has now had it so it's got to come off before I can do anything with it but I will probably take it off and take the opportunity of taking the bottom part of the plant off and then that one is highly likely going to get remounted with some fresh moss yes I know the moss will break down and I'll have to do it again but this doesn't lend itself to going in a pot it's a climber this is how it grows it grows over things and along things and up things and that doesn't lend itself to being in pot culture so that's what I'm going to do one at a time and I'm not going to film all of them I'll see what I can do I have some tor torture implements now that's my bonsai fork for getting the media out of the roots it's metal and I think that's going to be a bit brutal for orchid roots so that can go to one side I've got a stick with a sort of um, you know not a point as such but a flattened end that I could sort of poke around with and obviously wood is not as violent as metal so I've got that I've got a skewer that's got a flat end and a pointy end um, while I think about it let's get the point off so that it's not quite so abrupt so another piece of wood I know that seems daft that's a tag but it's stiff plastic with a blunt end and it would lend itself to just teasing some moss out and then I've got scissors to cut bits of nylon off fishing line and stuff if I'm taking plants right off or going to retie them so that's the sort of thing I'm doing now I did say this was the easy one so let's do the easy one the trouble is with taking the ties off is this <laughs> what are you supposed to put your tag on <laughs> But this is um, attached good enough that it doesn't need its um, fishing line. It, it just doesn't. It'll do fine without it. And look, one, one loop, not cut. There's always one, isn't there? Get the nylon off. As I said, this is well attached. And I think all I need to do with this one really is just, just tease that little bit of moss out. There's not a lot. hardly got any at all but any roots are attached I'd rather they stayed attached rather than get disturbed because if you tear a root off the chances are the bit of the velamen that was attached will get torn and damaged yeah see now he's fine now that's virtually all of the moss off I'll run that under the tap and the last few bits will just come off on their own so he's okay that was quick yeah, I wish they were all going to be that quick. While I'm at it, always take advantage of when you've got a plant under your nose to just trim dead roots off. They just tidy it up a bit. God, these scissors are not sharp anymore. You know what I'm like. I don't like blunt things. See, I mean, there's a root that's the ends died on that. It's broken near the edge of the mount, so there's no point in keeping that. Trim that one off couple of uh, see that one looks dead at the end but I bet if I cut it it's green not yet yeah it's green now so it'll branch just there's a broken piece there trim that that's still green now that one's not that's dead as a doornail take that one off that's probably it that's probably all I need to do now well, there's another there's another dead end just trim him off is he green inside yep there we go then, that's about it, one more, 
There's a dead leaf there. It's been hiding. That'll do for that one. He's okay now. Um, strangely enough, this seems reluctant to attach, and yet that one did. These did. And yet these ones, maybe the moss was in the way and they just decided to go aerial. But that, that one's okay now. Where's the tag? I forget what I was doing otherwise. Right, so that's that one done. Don't need to do anything to that one. Um, this one, I'm pretty sure, is going to go in a pot. So this just needs taking off and putting to one side in the sink, ready to uh, deal with it. I think it'll do better in a pot. This one. That's it. Keep the tag. line off. Well, it's funny, once you, once you actually get hold of old moss, I mean this is dry at the moment, I was just about to start watering and I thought well we're in for a dull day today, it's due to rain later today, so being a bit late with the watering today, they all got watered yesterday. Yeah, see, ah! No, I think that root's going to break. No, it pulled out. And I suspect the older part of the plant is not going to be kept, so if there's a few roots on the older part of the plant that did attach, they're not going to be kept anyway. Scissors. Nearly forgot. Just changing plants. I've just been trimming some roots on plant A, and now I'm going to do something to plant B. In between comes alcohol. At this time of day, just for the scissors, not for me. Yeah, see, I mean, these roots, these roots will hydrate if they get in some media. And that's, that's a viable piece of little plant there. Yeah, I think this one's going in a pot. Probably to sell on. So we'll take that piece off. Uh, that's just about worth keeping. Strictly speaking, it ought to have um, three or four bulbs on, but... That has got three. I mean, that one's still plump. It's got some roots. Right, what about this bit then? This bit's probably going to get a bit more damage because... I don't know. It's, um, it's, it's coming off. Some of these roots are just teasing off. They would have come off better if I'd given them a flipping good soak before I started. But then I'm working in sogginess. I'd rather work dry. Right, what have we got here? Look at the length of those um, rhizomes. I'm not sure that's worth hanging on to. This bit is though, because these are this, this has got short rhizomes and roots. So that's a good bit. We'll keep that. Take that one back to there. And we'll forget that bit. It's just too long and straggly. It will restrict what I can do with it in the pot. So we've got three pieces there. Give that a good rinse. Yep, three pieces. See, I mean, just, just by holding them like that, you can see that's going to be a nice pot full. That, that'll look nice in a pot. And as I said, if it takes off and manages to put a bloom up, then it'll sell easily. Then I've still got the two big pots. So that's those put to one side. So I haven't got my tray in here, have I? So I'm going to accumulate rubbish as I go along, which is a pain. But, um, oh, hang on, I haven't got my wire cutters. I'll be back in a second. Okay, this one's not going to be um, easy. Not easy at all. I'm going to set this plant back, I know it. It's just the way it's going to have to be. And I still think it's going to be better off bare rooted ultimately. I would love this to just drop off of its mount but it's not going to, I know it's not. Right, what have we got?
that moss is really embedded into the back of the plant. Yeah, I can smell it, it's not very nice. Do you know, I think I'm just going to have to just pull that and the roots that stay on the mount just stay on the mount and work with the new ones. There's plenty of them. I can't see these roots coming off easily. It's got to be worth a try though. Just gently pushing them from just above. See, even if the if I keep most of the root and lose the end of it, which is basically what's happened, you can see where that one that was attached and it's pulled. So <laughs> this is the little root inside the vellum. Um, but yes, a few of the ends have been torn. But if I trim those, oh, I, I can't believe I did this. I've even got bits of bark in here. One changes one's ideas as time goes on. But yeah, see, inside the moss, the roots are dead as a doornail. Absolutely. Now, okay, they might be dead because they're just old and they've been long since replaced, but they're gone. And they serve no purpose by being still on the plant. So there's some trimming to do in here, yeah, just to get rid of these old roots. And some of these are not too good. And I've still got to make the decision as to whether I remount it with some moss and set myself up for a problem down the line. Or just, um, I want to go and get you something. I've just thought of something. I have three Brassavola types. I've only got two here. I'm just going to pop out and get the other one. Right, why I wanted to get this one. This is Rhinocolalia something or other. Glauca. Um, but it, it's along the same lines. This was a big plant and suddenly the root system keeled over. And for a while I couldn't really work out what was going wrong. Too much water, not enough. And in the end, I thought, well, I'm going to have... This was a large plant. This is all that's left. Now, I'm not sure this piece is going to make it, these two pseudo bulbs here. But they've just started to chuck out a load of new roots. But I don't see any eyes. But if it can produce roots, it's going to find a way of pushing a growth out, I suspect. In fact, there's two new growths there. Those funny-looking black things are actually new growths. Uh, they may be rotten new growths, but there are some. Whereas this piece at the back, um, that's grown a lot of roots very quickly and it's attaching. It's bare rooted. And this is along the same lines. The moss broke down, destroyed or started to destroy the root system and I lost quite a large part of the plant as a consequence because some rot got into the rhizome. I had to cut this dramatically to get the black rot off. When that black rot, that um, wet black rot, sets into a plant, you have not got long. A couple of days and it'll have your plant. Um, I think John Benedict, he had a, he had a load of his um, catliers out on the lawn that had, you know, succumbed to the black rot. And they, they were basically failures. They just got taken away from all the other plants. They're gone. It's fast. And that brown rot as well, the similar thing, it smells, it, it, you get soggy bits on the leaves and they're wet. And if you put your finger on them like that and then smell, it smells horrible. They're a fungusy type thing and when they take over your plant, you've had it basically. <laughs> if you catch it early enough, you might be able to treat it or cut the bits out and save your plant. But, um, you know, if you think some of my plants can lurk in behind other plants and perhaps don't get looked at for five or six days when they're due to be watered again. That's the sort of thing that can take a plant down if you don't spot it quick. But that is doing a lot better than it was before. So I think that's what needs to be done to the two Brassavolas. Is basically trim those roots and try and get this sideways on somehow mount it sideways so that some of these roots are actually touching the mount. Most of these older ones are going to be trimmed off anyway and the latest new growth is here. It might even be worth doing it that way round so that that new growth's at the back rather than at the front which is not normally what I would do. See that 
that was that other growth I showed you that got bent where well, it's just come off in my finger. Come off in me and your honour. Um, yeah, if I put that new growth towards the back and mount it that way, then the latest roots that are going to come out underneath it are going to go straight down the back onto the mount. As well as quite a few of those will be touching the mount. So that's what's going to happen to that one. Let's have a look at this one. Oh, this is wired on as well. This is another one that had a really good root system and suddenly decided it's um, not playing games anymore. So because the wire goes through the plant, I need the ends of the wire to be relatively straight so that when I pull them from this side, they should come through. Oh, that one don't want to come out. Yes, it does. They should just thread their way back through. That's the theory. Now this one is not going to come off like the other one did, I don't think. This one is far too well attached. What do I do with this one? The moss has had it. And all the roots inside the moss are dead as a door now. Not good. But a lot of the good roots, so this this is this group this plant grew that way. So this back here is the oldest part of the plant. That's where all the dead roots are. Unfortunately, the newer roots are around this side and they are incredibly well attached. So I think what I'm going to do with this one is just try and get as much moss out as possible. The tap will help me with a little pokey thing of some sort and the tap running. I think I can get most of that out. And then what I can do is take the back end of the plant right off with all its dead roots and then retie it back on with little or no moss. But to, to enable me to get these roots back against the mount, this old part of the plant's just going to have to come off. But what is the point in trying to keep this? It's no good. It's had its day. And that hopefully will rejuvenate it. So that's a tap job. Obviously, I won't be able to film that any sense. Dead roots off, back of the plant off, and then that will allow the part of the plant that's going to stay, including most of its attached roots, back against the mount. So that's what I'm going to do with that one. Right, what else have we got then? I'm getting in a mess here. It's getting all messy. Now, what do I do with this little Neo? Well, he can't stay on there, and I don't really see many attached roots at all. This one is loose. Let's get this one off and have a look. I don't think this is even going to attempt to stick onto this mount. It's just going to come straight off. You have to sort of bear in mind, you know, when a, when a plant has an option to attach to a mount and it decides not to do it, it might not be the best place for it to be. It's just going to lift off in a mass. One root round the side and that just slipped off. So that came off far too easy. And that moss is oh, smelly. Any mushrooms? I reckon there's mushrooms in there. That's not doing the base of that plant any good at all. Now I've made me mind up it's going in a pot. But it's going in a pot in mainly sphagnum moss. I'll probably put some of the um, sponge rock in with it. Um, there's a few dead roots on here, but not many. They're not bad. It's just going to be difficult to get these flipping roots in a pot, but it's possible. You can see I'm sort of gathering it round. Now the traditional way to plant these, the Japanese way, would be to get a ball of sphagnum moss first. That's before you start. And then you sit the plant on the top of it 
and then you hold the roots around that ball of sphagnum and then you use the long strand sphagnum and you wrap it round and you wrap it round and you wrap it round until you've got a nice tight ball well not really really tight or just shut all the air out and then you sit it near the top of a pot and often inside the pot is just like drainage you know large bark or pieces of polystyrene or something like that and that's how it lives it sits around a moss ball with its external roots wrapped in more moss and that's how they've been growing them for a very long time and they do very well so he's going in a pot I'm saying he when it's in fact a they because there are two this one's not doing so well this little piece but not dead but if you look at the lack of roots on this little plant this one isn't doing so well but it has got root tips and new roots right those two are going in a pot decision made the chances are the other neo is going in exactly the same place so i don't need to worry about the tags on these i won't get them muddled up simply because one's variegated and one's not so they're um, quite obvious which is which don't worry too much about tags. Oh, I actually put the tag on the wire on that one. Oh well, don't do that very often. Now, are you going to come off? It's going to cost me two roots for the looks of it. Yeah, one, the other one, well the other one broke, but if trimmed will branch. Again, just running this under the tap, this moss is going to come straight out. It's practically falling out anyway. So at least I had the sense not to pack it in too tight. That's not too bad. Not too bad at all. A few dead roots to trim off. Not many. Not many at all. And again, it will sit in a pot and I think it will do better. There's a lot of new roots out here that stop growing. Um, maybe the proximity of some decent moss near them might actually regenerate the growing tips. They have lovely growing tips on these. Anyway, that's another one for a pot. What does that leave? That leaves this monster. And I'm pretty sure I've already made up my mind what I'm doing with this thing. I need to rejuvenate it, so I need to take it off and just start it again. It's as simple as that. The old part of the plant isn't ever going to do anything. It's not going to shoot out. And um, the top of the plant is growing off the top of the mount. And the only thing that can happen to that is aerial roots. And I don't think this is going to like aerial roots on, in the long term. It's putting up with it now because obviously it's um, getting hydration from lower down the plant. But that plant will go eventually. The older part of the plant will die back eventually. Now, how attached are you? Branching roots. If I lose a couple, it's not the end of the world. It's just a matter of minimising it as much as possible. And leaving some good ones. Right, I don't need to worry about everything below that because that part of the plant's coming off anyway. We're starting from there on that that bit. That's a perfectly viable little plant. It's even got some roots at the base. That's a dead one. But these aerial roots need to get into something. And as I said, I think I'm going to cut my own throat, but I think I'm probably going to remount it. It's not going to do well in a pot. That bit can come off there. This was my original intention, was to actually take these top pieces off and replant them down here. But I can't replant them on manky moss, can I? So I think it's easier to just... The same theory, I might even use the same mount, is to bring those lower down and plant them again. But um, a rejuvenation process as I'm doing it. Oh, that was a good root. That went right down into the bark, but pulled out. You've got to have a bit of luck sometimes, and it can't all be bad luck. 
got to have a bit of luck sometimes. Now that old part's got no signs of life, so that can go to there. It's another nice piece. Now this is the awkward one because this is um, this is shooting out new growths along most of its length. So what have we got here then? That's split right at the base. I might have to leave this piece as it is and put up with one old pseudo bulb. I'd rather not. It's going to spoil the look of it, isn't it? It's got an old pseudo bulb right in the middle, manky bit. And that's right where the plant splits as well. And if I take the splits off, I end up with a little tiny piece and, and not a bad bit. Not quite sure what the best thing is to do there. Do I just keep that old pseudo bulb? Just bury it in some moss or something. Let's trim it off and see what it looks like. Ah, it's come into two pieces, problem solved. That's a good piece, nice little roots. That will mount, but it'll take a while before it takes off because it's now too small and hasn't got any backup. Nonetheless, it has a new growth, it will grow. That wasn't the plan, but it'll do. There's a dead bit there. I think if I take that dead piece off, there, because it doesn't look very pretty, we take that piece off, like that, and then there's another, there's a new growth that failed there, that's unusual on this plant, it's normally, it's the only piece I've ever seen it lose, and then start with that, I don't need that dangly bit at the bottom. It's only going to rot. Yeah, that's not a bad little piece. That gives me a clump of pieces to start a new bush. That'll work. That's fine. Right, I'll clear up and um, start doing it, I suppose. Um, we'll see how we go. Mm -hmm.